Hello everyone, my name's Iman. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to tackle a practice problem set that relates to our lecture on ketones and aldehydes. Let's go ahead and get started with problem number one. Problem number one says, all of the following are true with respect to carbonyls except blank. Now, the carbonyl group is characterized by a carbon-oxygen double bond, and we want to keep this structure in mind as we analyze each option carefully. A states that the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic. This is correct because the carbon in the carbonyl group is partially positive due to the electronegativity difference between carbon and oxygen. oxygen pulls the electron density towards itself, and that leaves the carbon electron deficient, and that makes it susceptible to nucleophilic attack. So again, A is true. B states that the carbonyl oxygen is electron withdrawing. This is also true. Oxygen is highly electronegative, so it withdraws electron density from the carbonyl carbon. And again, this contributes to the partial positive charge on the carbonyl carbon and the partial negative charge on the oxygen. Now, option C states that a resonance structure of the carbonyl group places a positive charge on the carbonyl carbon. And this statement is correct as well. One of the key resonance structures of a carbonyl compound involves the movement of pi electrons towards the oxygen. And what this results in is a negative charge on the oxygen and a positive charge on the carbon. So C is true. Finally, D states that the pi electrons are mobile and they're pulled toward the carbonyl carbon. This statement is incorrect, it is false. In reality, the pi electrons of the carbonyl group are pulled towards the more electronegative oxygen atom, not the carbon. This electron delocalization strengthens the dipole moment of the carbonyl group, and that makes the oxygen partially negative and the carbon partially positive. So the only false statement of the four is D. Problem two says, Order the following compounds by increasing boiling point. Here we have butane, butanol, and butanoin. To solve this, we need to consider the intermolecular forces present in each compound, since boiling point is largely influenced by the strength of these interactions. So let's analyze each compound, starting with butane. Butane has a molecular formula of C4 H10. It's a simple alkane, meaning it is a non-polar molecule, and that means it only experiences London dispersion forces. This is the weakest type of intermolecular force. Because of this, butane has the lowest boiling point among the three. Next, let's look at butanoin. This is a ketone. It contains a carbonyl functional group. And the presence of this polar carbonyl allows butanoin to exhibit dipole-dipole interactions, which, by the way, are stronger than London dispersion forces. As a result, butanoin has a higher boiling point than butane. Finally, we can take a look at butanol. The molecular formula of butanol is C4H9OH. This is an alcohol, meaning it contains a hydroxyl group. This allows hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest of the three intermolecular forces that are discussed here. Because of this, butanol has the highest boiling point among the three. So if we were to order them in increasing boiling point, it would be butane, butanoin, and then butanol. So the correct answer for two is B. Problem three says, what is the product of the reaction below? In this problem, the starting compound contains a ketone functional group 
And the second reactant is an alcohol, which will participate in nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl carbon. This reaction falls under hemiketal formation, which occurs when a ketone reacts with one equivalent of alcohol. A hemiketal is characterized by a hydroxyl group, an alkoxy group, and two alkyl groups. Now for this OR group, this is going to be this part of the alcohol, so OC2H5. The two alkyl groups are going to be what are connected to the carbonyl carbon. So it's going to be C2H5, and it's also going to be a methyl group. So these four groups are going to be attached to the same carbon. We're looking for a carbon that has a hydroxyl group, our OR group, our two alkyl groups, C2H5, and a methyl. And the answer choice that best matches this is C. Problem four says, what is the product of the reaction below? In this reaction, we start with a ketone and a primary amine as reactants. When aldehydes or ketones react with ammonia or nitrogen-based derivatives, they undergo a condensation reaction to form an amine. The mechanism involves the nucleophilic attack of the amine on the electrophilic carbonyl carbon. This is followed by the elimination of water, and that results in the formation of a carbon-nitrogen double bond. We're looking for a answer that has this defining feature, a carbon double bonded to a nitrogen. And the only answer that matches this is A. A represents an imine where the ketone's carbonyl has been replaced with a carbon nitrogen double bond. So four is A. Problem five says, what is the product of the reaction below? In this reaction, we have an aldehyde that is being treated with potassium permanganate. Now, aldehydes are readily oxidized to their corresponding carboxylic acids when they're exposed to strong oxidizers like potassium permanganate. And the oxidation process is going to replace the hydrogen atom attached to the carbonyl group with a hydroxyl group, and that forms a carboxylic acid. So this is our end product. Notice we still have three carbons. The structure stays the same. There are five hydrogens right here, and then we have our carboxylic acid functional group, COOH. So our end product has the following molecular formula, and that matches answer choice B. Problem six says, what is the product of the reaction below? In this reaction, we're starting with a ketone, which is being treated with lithium aluminum hydride. Lithium aluminum hydride is a strong reducing agent that converts the carbonyl groups into alcohols by adding hydride ions. Now for ketones being treated with this strong oxidizing agent, they're going to be reduced to secondary alcohols. That means this carbon double bonded to oxygen is converted to a carbon that is bonded to a hydroxyl group. Now, we're looking for an answer choice that clearly demonstrates that conversion, and the one that best matches that is answer choice B. Notice that the ketone was converted to a carbon bonded to a hydroxyl group. None of the other structure is changed in any way. So six is B. Problem seven says, what is the product of the reaction between benzal benzaldehyde and an excess of ethanol in the presence of anhydrous hydrochloric acid? So in this reaction, we're treating an aldehyde with excess ethanol, so excess alcohol and that suggests that we're gonna form an acetyl. An acetyl is defined as having two alkoxy groups, 
and two alkyl groups. These two alkyl groups are going to be the same groups that are attached to the aldehyde, so a hydrogen atom and this benzene ring. Then the two OR groups are going to be this part of the alcohol, so C2H5O. So we're looking for a product that has a central carbon that's attached to a benzene ring, that is attached to a hydrogen, and that is attached to two OC2H5 groups. The answer choice that best matches this is D. So seven is D. Moving on to problem eight. Problem eight says hemiacetals and hemiketals usually keep reacting to form acetals and ketals. Why is it difficult to isolate hemiacetals and hemiketals? Statement one says these molecules are unstable. Statement two says the hydroxyl group is rapidly protonated and lost as water under acidic conditions, leaving behind a reactive carbocation. And statement three says the molecules are extremely basic and they react rapidly with one another. Let's examine each of these statements, starting with statement one. This is true. Hemiacetals and hemiketals are not particularly stable because they contain both a hydroxyl and an alkoxy group on the same carbon. This makes them prone to further react, especially in acidic conditions. Statement two is also true. In an acid catalyzed environment, the hydroxyl group of a hemiacetal or hemiketal can be protonated and eliminated as water, and that forms a carbocation intermediate. This highly reactive carbocation species is going to react quickly with another alcohol molecule to form the final acetyl or ketal. So statements one and two are both correct so far. What about statement three? Statement three is actually false. Hemiacetals and hemiketals are not inherently basic, and they do not react with one another in the way that this statement suggests. Their reactivity is primarily driven by their instability and the tendency of the hydroxyl group to be lost in acidic conditions. So since only statements one and two are true, the correct answer is B. Moving on to problem nine. Problem nine says, in a hemiacetal, the central carbon is bonded to blank. Now, in a hemiacetal, we have a hydroxyl group, we have an alkoxy group, we have a hydrogen, which was originally part of the aldehyde, and then we have another alkyl or R group, which is the remaining part of the original aldehyde. And this list matches answer choice A. So nine is A. Problem 10 says, in a reaction between hydrogen cyanide, butyraldehyde, and ethyl methyl ketone, which compounds will come together to form the major product? To solve this problem, we need to think about how these compounds react. Aldehydes and ketones, they undergo nucleophilic addition reactions. The carbonyl carbon in these functional groups is electrophilic due to the partial positive charge, and that makes it susceptible to nucleophilic attack. Then hydrogen cyanide is a strong nucleophile because the cyanide ion has a strong negative charge that allows it to attack the electrophilic carbonyl carbon. Between the aldehyde and the ketone, the aldehyde is more reactive towards nucleophilic attack. And that is because aldehydes have less steric hindrance than ketones. And that makes the carbonyl carbon more accessible. So the correct answer here is A. The aldehyde and the hydrogen cyanide nucleophile are going to react together to form the major product. 10 is A. 11 says, which of the following describe PCC? Statement one says, an oxidant that can form aldehydes 
from primary alcohols. Two says an oxidant that can completely oxidize primary alcohols. And statement three says an oxidant that can completely oxidize secondary alcohols. As a friendly reminder, PCC is a mild oxidizing agent. So let's keep that in mind as we think about each statement. For statement one, this is correct. PCC does oxidize primary alcohols to aldehydes, but unlike strong oxidizing agents, it doesn't further oxidize them to carboxylic acid. Statement two, however, is incorrect. PCC stops at the aldehyde stage, and it does not continue oxidation to carboxylic acids. Stronger oxidizing agents like potassium permanganate or chromic acid would be required for full oxidation to a carboxylic acid. Then statement three is correct. PCC oxidizes secondary alcohols to ketones. Since ketones are already at their highest oxidation state in this context, no further oxidation occurs. So since statements one and three are true, the correct answer is C. Problem 12 says, to form a geminal diol, which of the following could attack a carbonyl carbon? We know a carbonyl carbon is electrophilic, and that means it's susceptible to nucleophilic attack. In a hydration reaction, water adds to a carbonyl, forming a geminal diol, which is a compound with two hydroxyl groups on the same carbon. Therefore, the correct answer for 12 is B. Problem 13 says, in a reaction between ammonia and glutaraldehyde, what is the major product? What we have here is an aldehyde that's reacting with a nitrogen-based compound. Aldehydes react with ammonia and other nitrogen-based compounds to form an imine. In this process, the lone pair on the nitrogen attacks the electrophilic carbonyl carbon, and that leads to a series of proton transfers and the elimination of water. And then the final product is an imine, where the carbonyl oxygen is replaced with a nitrogen double bond. Now, since glutaraldehyde has two aldehyde groups, they can both react with ammonia, potentially forming a double imine. Looking at the answer choices, then the correct answer is going to be A. Problem 14 says, which of the following can be used to reduce a ketone to a secondary alcohol. To reduce a ketone to a secondary alcohol, a reducing agent must donate electrons to the carbonyl carbon, breaking the double bond to oxygen, and then forming a hydroxyl group. Two commonly used reducing agents for this transformation are lithium aluminum hydride and sodium borohydride. These reagents effectively reduce ketones to secondary alcohols by transferring hydride ions. Therefore, the correct answer is C. If you examine the other answer choices, chromium trioxide and potassium permanganate, these are strong oxidizing agents, meaning they would oxidize compounds rather than reduce them. Silver oxide is also an oxidizing agent that's used for specific reactions. So the only answer that makes sense for problem 14 is C. And now we can move into our last and final problem. This problem says I means naturally tautomerize to form blank. Like we noted in lecture, I means undergo tautomerization to form enemies. And this process involves the movement of a hydrogen atom and a shift in the position of the double bond. So the correct answer here is going to be D. I hope this has been helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns down below. Other than that, good luck, happy studying, and have a beautiful, beautiful day, future doctors.